Uh, we will begin, we will proceed as follows. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Professor Sosa uh, uh, speaking on uh, Okay. Okay. So I'm told he will be speaking briefly on the uh, intuition at the beginning, and then later he will uh, add some more uh, ideas. And then um, after him, we have uh, Professor Paul Horwich, and then Professor Claudio de Almeida, and finally Professor Juan Comesaña. Uh, each one with uh, 20 minutes, and then we will make a break for coffee, and then after that, the general discussion. Okay, I uh, please ask uh, Professor er Ernest Sosa to begin. Okay, I'm sure I speak for all my fellow visitors and participants when I uh, thank our Brazilian friends for so graciously hosting this uh, uh, wonderful conference. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to talk very briefly, just uh, sketching the, um, the ideas in the paper, uh, and then reserve, uh, reserve the balance of my time for um, some re responses at the end. Um, my paper uh, tries to understand philosophical intuitions and, um, and then rational intuitions more, more broadly, uh, what they are and uh, what probative force they might have. So it compares uh, intuition with uh, rational intuition with the traditional perceptual model, according to which the mind has its own eye that sees what the light of reason illuminates. This model is found uh, problematic in, in the paper because uh, basically because there's nothing quite like sensory experience sandwiched between the fact that we intuitively know uh, and uh, our intuitive belief in those, in those facts. So we turn then to the uh, Cartesian model, turn away from the perceptual model to the Cartesian model, namely the model of introspection, actually, when you think that um, uh, Descartes' uh, paradigm of clear and distinct perception is, um, is pain. It's the, the famous case of the, uh, the footache. When you separate the feeling of pain and your knowledge of the feeling of pain from any hypothesis as to the causal origin of that feeling, that's what Descartes wants to focus on, a paradigm of uh, uh, clear and distinct knowledge. Uh, so that's the Cartesian model. It's an introspective model. We turn to that one, having move beyond the perceptual model. And this model um, is rejected in the paper because it cannot account, um, there's one basic problem for it, I think, namely it cannot account for false, intuitively justified beliefs, as in cases of uh, paradox, the Sorites or the liar, or take your favorite paradox, where um, in any such case, if the paradox is going to be presumably some false belief that um, extremely intuitively plausible, that attracts our uh, assent very powerfully on an intuitive basis. So if we, if we agree that there are these intuitively justified false beliefs, um, then there's a problem for the introspective model, because according to the introspective model, uh, the way we're epistemically justified intuitively is when we take the given but for us to be able to take the given, the given has to be there. But if it's a false, intuitively justified belief, there isn't, there ain't nothing there for us to take. So that's a problem for the introspective model, the Cartesian model. Uh, and so that um, uh, prepares the way for uh, an alternative um, proposal, which is a proposal according to which um, competence, the idea of competence is um, uh, a better um, way to understand um, intuitively justified belief. Um, so what's intuitively justified is what derives from um, the exercise, uh, what constitutes the exercise of competence. Of course, there are different competencies, and so we'd have to 
uh, focus on the particular kind of competence that's involved in rationally intuitive justification, rationally intuitive knowledge. Um, does the virtue or competence account underwrite philosophical intuition as a source of epistemic justification? Um, well, it's, and so now, now we're focusing on philosophical intuition. Does that account, the competence account, does it help um, to buttress or underwrite philosophical intuition and the use of philosophical intuition um, in assessing um, the epistemic merits of um, account, theory, philosophical views. It's difficult for anyone positively to argue for that without incurring the charge of vicious circularity. And so what can uh, more persuasively be done, I think, is to defend philosophical intuition as understood here on the competence model against recent objections, among which uh, there are a couple that stand out. There's an objection according to which um, intuition cannot be calibrated unlike other sources of knowledge. So that's one attack that needs to be uh, addressed. And the second attack is an attack by Stephen Stitch and his collaborators, according to which um, um, intuition, philosophical intuitions in particular, are tainted by their social and cultural origins. Um, and so that's the second um, objection that um, must be um, uh, defeated. And so that, that's what the paper tries uh, to do in, uh, in a long uh, appendix. Okay, so that's, that's a map of what I uh, try to do. And now, um, uh, after the, um, the uh, comments, I'd like to fill in the, the map some more. And uh, in doing so, I'll be addressing the comments of the uh, commentators uh, as well. Ah, 